My friends, I recently came across a statement that made me pause and think. It was from Christopher Bamford, a noted spiritual author and translator of early Christian texts. He claimed, and I quote, We can find no beginnings for Christianity in Ireland. It has always been there. End of quote. Always been there? And we credit Patrick with bringing the gospel to our island? Always been there? What on earth could that mean? Interestingly, Ireland is virtually unique in that the arrival of Christianity was not accompanied by martyrdom or persecution. Ireland's first martyrs came in the 16th century after the Reformation and the persecution that accompanied the anti-Catholic penal laws. By comparison, just think of what happened in Rome when so many of the first Christians were cast to the lions and brutally martyred. Why was Christianity accepted in Ireland, in that far, in that far-flung savage island, without the martyrdom that accompanied the advent of Christianity in other lands? Well, Bamford makes the point that the Christ who was to come was already present to the people of Ireland in their solidarity with creation, in their contemplation of nature and of the cosmos. There was, if you like, an affinity between the pagan religions of Ireland and the Christianity that baptised or assimilated or replaced them. Patrick, to his credit, knew that and he took advantage of it. During his time of slavery and imprisonment, he not only learned the Irish language, but he got to know the people and how and what they believed. The evidence suggests that the pagan Irish practised some sort of water purification rites. Every village had its sacred well. Patrick went to these wells, he blessed them, and he baptised the people at them. And of course, every village claims that Patrick baptised at their local well. And if the claim is not true, at least it's well founded. Patrick, as you know, used the shamrock, that traditional plant which grew all over the island, and he used it to explain the doctrine of the Trinity. Do you see what Patrick is doing? Do you see how he operates? He's not just converting people, but he is converting culture, opening the eyes of the people to see the promise and hope of Christianity already in their own religion and experience a challenge for us in every time and in every place. But that's why there were no martyrs when the message of Christ was proclaimed on our shores. Another, perhaps more significant example. The pagan Irish had an extraordinary sense of God's presence, of God's power, of God's strength to protect them. Patrick picked up on that too. We have a hymn attributed to St. Patrick, St. Patrick's breastplate. You probably recognize the words. Christ be near at either hand, Christ behind before me stand, Christ with me where'er I go, Christ around, above, below. Patrick composed the breastplate prayer in the year 433. It's a beautiful prayer, celebrating a God who lives with God's children guiding them, sheltering them, strengthening them. A God who is with us and in us, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, through creation, redemption and final glory. According to one legend, St. Patrick baptised the King of Cashel, and as he spoke to the King about the life, death and resurrection of Jesus and the salvation that was promised to him, Patrick accidentally pierced the monarch's foot with his staff or crozier. And the king endured his pain with dignity, declaring that he thought it was part of the ceremony. If Jesus dies for our sins, he said, I can suffer this. Patrick, you will be glad to know, healed the wound. Patrick, as you did for the people of Ireland 1600 years ago, 
open our eyes to the mystery of God that sustains us, to the splendor of creation that surrounds us, and to the power of Christ that supports us. God bless Boston. God bless Ireland. God bless the Ukraine and our troubled world. God bless all women and men at this time.